Yes. Senator Nyonga, I have, uh, Kenyans have taxed. Now they are the economists in the panel. Uh, to be honest with you, yes. The, the basic normal international rate is at about 30%. And that is when you take it gross. Trevor, the problem we have is uh, I, I, I really admire my brother Halwali because he has discussed what taxes are and what the relevance of these taxes is to the social, political, economic engagement that uh, between the rulers and the ruled. You know that many, many, many uh, revolutions have taken place because the public felt they have been overtaxed. There are many countries that you find that uh, have had their citizens rebel. I mean, Sudan is a case, leave alone what is happening in Sudan now. Many, many different countries. Some countries have fought over rice, Pakistan, India. These are issues that have been there. And why? The, the truth, Trevor, is that, uh, at least for me, <laughs> I exonerate myself because I have been talking about the state of our economy for the last five years, I think, I've been coming to this show. I've been saying, one, we have been borrowing too much, all right? And when you borrow and spend this money on high capital proje projects, yeah. And yet, you are forgetting to even have your own food security, where the small um, MDCs, medium level uh, industrial plants that are even supposed to make toothpicks, yeah. things that are places where, I mean, we have a country that, in fact, what happened to us is that we became the dumping supermarket for the Chinese products, and all our products are no longer now. So a few are, are managing to access the international market because of the high standard, and this is where I put our coffee. And yet you can imagine we don't have enough products that we can export so that we can generate revenue even for us to import anything that we may need. So where are we as a country, number one? I believe President Ruto is between a rock and a hard place. Why? Because he found a country that basically, which he participated in, <coughs> we are at a debt ceiling of about 11 trillion shillings. This is money that has been borrowed and spent for the last <coughs> 10 years that initially the Jubilee government and now the uh, Kenya Kwanza government is in power. Number two, we are, I believe the president is deliberately going out and trying to seek for funding from multilateral donors, from in the international community, and from the international financial organizations. You're talking about the World Bank, the IMF, Africa Development Bank, so that he can feel, fit in these gaps. So he's dealing with having to borrow, then he's dealing with having to pay the debts, then he's dealing with a high recurrent expenditure, he's dealing with a bloated uh, personnel and workforce, so that is why right now I believe uh, Honorable Boni, I think William Ruto popularity might be even be at 10%. Because people don't see that he's dealing with issues because people want to see results very quickly. As a result, he's going to have to increase the taxes. You can see he's changed fuel tax from 8% to 16%. Increasing that 8% means that actually by the time this bill passes, that is going to be June, July, our fuel is going to be 200 shillings a liter. That then has a domino effect all the way. Uh, you know, fuel is a factor of production now. So the vehicles, transport, the matatus, the tractors, they use fuel. Then as a result, you are transposing food from Kitale, from Eldoret, from Kakamega to Nairobi. Then you are having an increment in the prices of these items. What happens after that? Inflation then goes up. Once inflation goes up, then you are now unable even to service your debts. You can't borrow. The IMF and World Bank are giving us conditionalities. Yeah. You remember, Bonnie, when we had the structural adjustment program? Programs, yeah. Those are the things they're telling the president without him telling us. So the president right now, Mr. Ruto, I don't think he's sleeping very well. Yeah. It is very, very difficult. But there's only one request I would like to make to him and uh, Tim, uh, the bull fighter here. There's a very important aspect of the Kenyan constitution, something called public participation. Mm -hmm. Let the president come and tell Kenyans the status of our economy. 
with honesty, without necessarily going into the nitty gritties. Yeah. Let him say, ladies and gentlemen, we have a problem. We want to fill in a gap of 600 billion. If we fill this gap, the reason is we cover this other gap. Yeah. We are having a problem with our fuel. The reason why is because he must, the president must carry us along in this journey. Because the reality is, if we do not, if he doesn't do what he's doing, now I'm being as an, as an honest person who has studied some economics, yeah. if he doesn't do what he's doing, then we'll stop paying our debts. Then we'll become uncreditworthy. Yeah. Then you will have nothing. You, you won't even have uh, international companies giving you tickets mm. or airline services because they'll say Kenya is not able to pay its anything. Yeah. So that even if an aeroplane leaves Nairobi and it's going to London, under the IATA regulations, you know, we are supposed to remit landing fees here, landing fees there. They'll say these guys are bankrupt. They can't even, they will even yeah, no. stop us having our airplanes and airlines yeah. flying out to the international, um, the international market. So for me, if the president can be open-minded yeah. and he comes, you know, the pre I always see him, by the way, he comes and he loves talking politics. Let him get David Ndee. Ndee knows economics incredibly well. Let him do him a one-pager. Yeah. This is where we are. This is what we found. This is the problem. This is how we solve it. And hopefully the results will be expected this. So there is management of expectation. Yeah, but David Nee himself said that if you, had, uh, if you have a better option, you come up with a budget that will balance everything, including the IMF demands. And yes. the National Assembly Finance and National Planning Committee is asking for memoranda from the public. What would you recommend to them? It, you've, you've just mentioned right now that the president is between a rock and a hard place. Yes. What would you recommend? Can I tell you? Yes. David D also talks <laughs> about wastage. Okay. The truth is, I mean, we, we, we don't want to be honest and we don't want to say it. Yes. The truth is we are very, very wasteful. Very wasteful. I believe that the amount of money we are stealing, mismanaging, that we are getting trips that are not needed, that we are going to do things that we don't need, and yet they're very nitty gritty. So for me, the president should actually come with a moratorium. And I saw indeed talk about, oh, you know, if those um, uh, 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 functions are not held in the hotels, then the hotels will not employ people. Then you'll have unemployment. Then there'll be no revenue circulation. I want to tell David indeed this. You don't have to steal 500 billion like the Auditor General said, Mr. Good, 400 billion that time for people to be employed in hotels. Okay. You see my argument? What we need to do is let's manage our resources well so that even when we are going to hold this, those seminars in the hotels, yeah. there is justification and there is reality on the impact and what that money is doing. Okay. But when you find, I mean, like, uh, Honorable Boni, 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 you are my brother and you know I respect you. You come and tell us, and this is why I'm saying about, talking about this thing of public participation. The president is saying things are bad. David Ndi is saying things are bad. Gashago is saying things are bad. Then you come and tell us, no, you guys, we are allocating 800 million to buy vehicles for Musalia. Yeah. Then you are giving the vice, the vice president's office 1.2 billion in a period of six months. Then, then you say, no, 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 we are actually going to employ CISs, 50 of them. I mean. There must be consistency in your messaging yeah. and there must be consistency in the reality you are presenting to us so that Kenyans see that you actually mean what you are saying. Yeah. Right now, Kenyans see that what the president is saying is not what he means and his government. Okay.